We'd like to welcome you to our current event and weekly Bible study for February 12th, 2018. And today, going to be covering a lot of different topics here. I got quite a bit to cover. Uh, just some Bible verses before we get started to kind of set the tone. Uh, Psalm 112 through 112, 4 through 9 it says, Unto the upright there riseth light in the darkness. He is gracious and full of compassion. And righteous. So these are attributes of a upright person, an upright person in God's view. Okay, gracious, full of compassion, and righteous. Okay, so God's been very gracious to us regarding just the free gift of salvation available through Jesus Christ. Um, you're saved by grace through faith and that not of yourself. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest any man should boast. The Bible says, um, so you're saved by grace. Okay. And an attribute of an upright person is he is gracious and full of compassion and righteous. And then it goes on to say, a good man showeth favor and lendeth. He will guide his affairs with discretion. So it's not just like you're, you're out there just you know, lending to anybody or whatever, you're going to guide your affairs with discretion, with prudence. These are also attributes of a, and really it's, it's to be led of the Lord, okay, um, in that regard. And not everybody's even in a position where they can obviously do that, you know, but as far as lending, um, but there's different things you can lend as well. I mean, it just doesn't have to be money, I guess. Uh, next verse, surely he shall not be moved forever, the righteous shall be in everlasting remembrance. So, again, it's like when you build your house on the solid rock of Christ Jesus, when the winds come and the waves come and all the things that could happen, earthquakes and things of this nature, you're not going to be moved. And that's what the Bible says both in the New and the Old Testament. He shall not be afraid of evil tidings, which is, you know, that's tough to do anymore. I mean, that's pretty much all you ever see. It's what I cover a lot in regard to but the, the bottom line is, is is if you're if you're a saved born again christian you're on the winning team and so no matter what comes worst case scenario absent from the body is to be present with the lord so he shall not be afraid of evil tidings his heart is fixed trusting in the lord uh which trusting in the lord also implies faith which is absolutely you know integral for salvation and pleasing god and faith is the substance of things hoped for and the evidence of things not seen uh, without faith it is impossible to please god faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of god so if you lack faith you can ask god but also listen and read the word of god to build up your faith and um, the more you're reading and listening to the word of god the more your faith is going to grow but also faith is like a muscle and unless it's exercised, um, it will not tend to grow. And sometimes God will put you in positions where your faith is exercised and you don't want to be in those positions, but it's for your benefit. It's so that your faith will grow. Uh, going further, uh, let's see here. His heart is established. He shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemies. I think what that would mean is that if you have like an overt enemy like okay let's say for example these literal witches that have tried to astral project in, into you know the house i'm at right now and try to kill us on i don't know how many different occasions and literally i've gotten you know emails from black-eyed women that are like you know we're coming for you scotty you know the whole i mean literally with the sign that says that I've, I've i've done whole studies on this i mean i don't even these these people if they're even human you know most likely not um but knowing their end is a fearful thing knowing that when like they try to astral project in here and they die which i know has happened on two different occasions um uh granted i don't have any do i have like the death certificate right no but you know i've got confirmation that it did happen that's a fearful thing so i think that's what that's in reference to his heart is established he shall not be afraid until he see his desire upon his enemies and then it says in verse 9 he hath dispersed 
he hath given to the poor. His righteousness endureth forever. So I think giving is always an essential attribute of a Christian. You know, and that could be giving in time, it could be giving in doesn't have to necessarily be money uh, it could be in other things you know um the bible says in the new testament as a man hath purposed in his heart so let him give the whole old testament levitical tithe thing never applied to born again christians and it sure didn't apply to them if they were gentiles that was for the to support the levitical priesthood when they had the literal temple now if you don't believe that kian New Testament giving or tithe in the keyword search box at contendingfortruth.com. I've done a whole study on that. I mean, it's it's not even debatable on that. But it is the biggest thing the 501c3 churches will use to keep their congregants in that bondage mindset. Now, I'm not saying you, God may convict you to give more than 10%. But where did God ever say in the Bible that we need to be giving this 10% tithe in order to keep the New Testament churches and the pastors and, and all the churches and all the functions of the churches in business so that they can have this big, huge church wherever. There is no even example of that in the New Testament. I know the Bible says, you know, the pastor should be accounted like double honor or whatever and, and, and the workman is worthy of the hire and all this stuff. I get that. I, I understand that. I'm not saying that pastors and things like this shouldn't be compensated but i'm talking about in particular the big mega churches that are you know being built and literally hardly any of their proceeds go to missions hardly any of their proceeds go to the poor or the benevolent fund or whatever that's what i'm talking about i mean that's that's totally unbiblical and and um there's no there's no new testament example i mean in the new testament they were literally meeting in their houses and um having church services there there were no denominations because denominations aren't biblical either if you think, i mean we got like i've heard it's like over twenty thousand or something maybe 30 of s s christian supposed derivations of christian denominations on the planet i can't even fathom that and there's no bible for it the Bible even talks about that. I believe it's in Romans. It, it, they were they were starting to already want to lean toward that, and, and I believe Paul said, you know, one saith, uh, you know, I am of Apollos, I am of Paul, I am of whatever Peter, and they condemned it because it was like, oh well, I got saved by Paul, and I got led to the Lord by Apollos, and I and I'm better than you. We we're, we're and that's how denominations got started. They were never biblical. So there's so much stuff that goes on in, in, in the 501c3 church being literally yoked up with the government, literally having the right to exist by the government. Their 501c3 charter literally given to them through the IRS, through the government, yoked up with the government, having to play by their rules, by their standards. They're not supposed to say certain things because of this charter so that they can have their congregants can you know, write off this on their taxes, which I don't think that's biblical either. And the Bible says when you give, let now your right hand know what your left hand's doing. I mean, there's just so many things that go on in the modern day 501c3 church that is totally, totally, totally unbiblical that they won't ever discuss. Not, I mean, if they're in the system, they're not going to condemn themselves. But I will. Because, you know, am I therefore become your enemy because I tell you the truth? I've done whole studies and all this stuff before. So, just kidding, 501c3... Um, and then they're, they're, they're using false Bible versions, King, King James, key that in, um, King James, the version they should be using, but you know, they're using these new age Bible versions. Um, you can key in tithe for the other or any other thing that I might've mentioned, you know, and then how the church is literally being yoked up now with Homeland Security and FEMA through the clergy response teams. And you'll never know because they'll never tell you. But there's literally thousands of churches across America that are literally yoked up with this. And when the time comes when they impose martial law and of this thing, they're going to be the ones literally turning you in because they've got databases on you. And they're data mining and, they're, and they're, they've probably already turned over all this stuff to the government anyway. Because they've been promised that they'll be taken care of when that time comes and, and they'll be put on the whatever the bus or the or the train or whatever just like everyone else i suspect maybe they will maybe because they've been good little but 
you know, it won't benefit him in hell. Because if, if you're willing to do that to your congregation, please don't think you're ever going to go to heaven. I mean, if you're willing to sell out your, your congregation. The Bible says that the true shepherd loveth the sheep, you know, and he will lay down his life for the sheep. Jesus Christ being the best example of that. But the hireling have no love, no true love for the flock. Why? Because he's doing it for the hire, the money. They're false prophets and false pastors and all the... I mean, that's the norm now. It's the norm. Or Luke... The, at bare minimum, they're lukewarm beyond belief. Now, I'm not saying that because I think I'm perfect or anything or I'm Mr. Self-Righteous. I'm just kind of stating facts here. You know, that's just kind of the norm. And the Bible said it was going to be this way. Just go to Revelation 3. Later see in church here. You're neither hot nor cold, but you're lukewarm. I'm going to spew out of my mouth because you're, because you're this way. But yet you think you're in need of nothing. The, that, the, the churches that are like this think that they're good with God. They think they're in need of nothing. They're good. But in God's eyes, they're blind, wretched, naked before God. So, uh, anyway, let's get into the study here. Now, this is just an update on what could be expected for the U.S. and the world economy in the coming months. I'm not saying that this is going to happen. I'm saying that this is from a financial expert that's been doing this a lot longer than me. And it was a guy, and I'm only going to play about about 12 minutes of this. It's uh, Peter Schiff and uh, Alex Jones is interviewing him. And I, the thing is, is I'm not playing it because it's Peter Schiff, or I'm sure not playing it because it's Alex Jones, because I don't even hardly go up on Alex Jones anymore. But this is echoing a lot of what I've been hearing from a lot of other financial experts. I, I wouldn't be playing this if he was the only guy saying this is what I'm saying. But it's about the stock market and the whole bubble and the whole how, how the whole system is based upon fraud and unjust scales and balances and that at some point something's got to give. And I would think that they would end up using this to usher us into like a one world currency or it, or at bare minimum like a regional currency like if they have like the the 10 regions that we know we're going to be going into according to daniel and uh revelation the 10 regions the 10 kings that the bible talks about in daniel um the region that we would be represented at least america and there's these are for different regions would be the um north american union Okay, Mexico, Canada, and America, okay, would be one region. And they would, and I've heard for a long time that that particular currency could be called the Amero, which would be a combination of all the, the three. Now, whether they'll do that or whether they'll go to a one world currency or whether they'll do something now with this Bitcoin thing where they'll just try to go totally digital, and totally crypto, I think that would be hard to do. I don't think that the world's quite ready for that at this point. Uh, but one way or another, they're going to have to probably get into some type of digital currency because I don't know how they could implement the mark of the beast unless they had that system fully in place. Because the mark of the beast, you'll just get your, your forehead or your right hand scanned and all of that will be digital, right? I mean, it's not going to be, the cash is going to be gone. Any type of physical money will probably be outlawed at that point to, to use commerce with it other than, other than like, christians using it by like in in a they, what they would term a black market setting or or people on the fringes of society or other people that don't want to be in the system they would try, probably try to use honest currencies um like gold silver whatever or whatever bartering that type of medium of exchange whereas in order for the mark of the beast to work it's got to be all digital I can't see any other way. The, the, I mean, it's gonna you're gonna get your right hand scan. And it's gonna either, it's gonna um, debit or you know your bank account that type of thing, or whatever account you've got it for that it's gonna come out of. So I just wanted to play this again, not because I'm promoting Peter Schiff or Alex Jones or whatever, but this is echoing a lot of other supposed financial experts that do this for a full time living of what they're saying could be coming in the next few months. Now, hope I'm not right, something to pray about, but I think at one, at some point in time in the future, this is an inevitability for this to happen. I've been saying that for a lot of years too. 
the, the sooner he tells the truth, the better. But of course, you know, it's going to be hard now, given all the credit he's claimed for what's happened since he was elected, for him to now come clean and say the economy's no good. You know, the stock market's a bubble. You know, it's, he, so he, I, I think he got a lot of bad advice. And now, unfortunately, he, he is the fall guy. There, there's no way to stop this. And if the Fed under Powell tries to buy Trump some time, I don't think he's going to be able to buy enough. I think the problem is so big that the minute the Fed has to try to solve it, it's going to unleash a much bigger one. So that, they just played an excerpt from the start. I probably should have waited, but they were trying to like, it's like a teaser thing, you know. Um, but they're, they're, what he's saying there, and this is what I had seen too a lot about, if Trump did get an office, that at some point in time he was going to be used as a fall guy. Meaning they weren't going to collapse the economy under Obama. And most likely not under Bush. or they're, they're all on that team. Or if Hillary would have got in. They're all on that team. They're, they're, they were put in place to destroy the, the economy. To bring us into bondage and these types of things. Now I'm not saying Trump's any kind of angel. I'm not saying whatever. But it is a fact that he has gone against a lot of what the elite the Illuminati, the globalists would have done. Had Hillary got in, we'd be in a totally different situation right now. That I don't see how that can really be argued. Uh, again, not some blanket endorsement of, of, of Trump or whatever, but I'm just saying that, that things, I believe, have went a very different way than what they had planned had Hillary got in. Um, he's undone many things that they wanted to do he's moved trying to move it in an office but if they get to a certain point where they're like okay let's say they can't kill him or they can't discredit him, him or they can't get him out of office or they can't impeach him or whatever um this might be the the next plan for that where they just use him as the fall guy you know and, and destroy the economy because i believe they have that power I mean, if, if the Rothschilds and the Rockefellers and those devils are at the top of the food chain and they control the Federal Reserve and they control the International Monetary Fund and they control a lot with the stock markets and they control the price of gold and silver every day, and they do, well, doesn't that give them kind of the power, I mean, if God permits them to do it, to kind of pull the plug on the world economy? And I, th that's why I'm saying that I don't think this would just apply to America. I think this would apply in a global sense. And in a global sense, if this were enacted, it would be a way to create a lot of desperation and get people on the same page and willing to go into a global type of currency that was um, potentially digital. Or at bare minimum, something like the Amero, wh wh where they could then work into then the next stage of a, of a digital currency, or a one world currency that would be digital. Again, it's it's. I'm not. I'm not like. I'm not saying I'm a prophet or whatever. I'm just. I'm kind of throwing out different scenarios, uh, different things that I've brought up over the years, looking at this situation. All right. Final segment with Peter Schiff of Euro Pacific Capital Euro Pack dot com. Then I'm going to open the phones up into all the other big breaking news in the next segment. Look, I like the fact that Trump's anti-political correctness says he's free market, uh, doing a lot of good things. But it's true that this economy is a giant bubble. Uh, and now, again, as I said before the break, we see the Federal Reserve, with the activities it's doing, not supporting President Trump like it did Obama. So I was just asking Mr. Schiff why he thinks that's happening and then what that will precipitate. Well, you know, the Fed, I said, they were dragging their feet in raising rates. Uh, while Obama was president. They talked about raising rates, but at the end of the day, they barely moved them up. Now, the, the pace of hikes has increased since Trump was elected. But part of the reason for that, I mean, the media is not talking down the economy. If anything, they're, they're overhyping the economy. Everybody's talking about how strong the economy is, how everything is great. Everybody is taking credit uh, for this great economy. The Fed wants to take credit for it. Trump wants to take credit for it. So if everybody's talking about how great the economy is, the Fed doesn't have any excuse if it doesn't raise rates. How can the Fed not raise rates when they're so low if the economy is really this great? So in order to keep up the pretense that the economy is as strong as everybody thinks, the Fed is in this box where it has to raise rates. 
Uh, but, you know, they can't tell the truth that, well, it's really a bubble. And if we raise rates, we're going to prick it. Uh, so they're kind of in this bind and they and, and they're still, you know, telegraphing that they're going to raise rates three or four times this year. And, and that is the problem. You know, and and the market, though, is moving rates up even higher because the deficit is exploding. You see, one of the things that happened under Obama is he inherited a massive deficit from uh, from Bush. The deficit skyrocketed in 2008, 2009. And so, you know, after a couple of years, the deficits were slowly falling while Obama was president. Now, they were falling from a very high level, but at least they were going down. All of a sudden, deficits are skyrocketing and they're about to explode out of control. Yet we have no way to finance them. That is the problem. And so interest rates have no place to go uh, but way up, not just a little up, but, but much, much higher. And how can we afford to service the debt? Where is the government going to get the money to pay the interest? Let me ask you this then. Can Trump, Trump, if you're right, get out of this? Is there a way to get out of this? Because culturally what he's doing is great. No, well, look, the, the sooner he tells the truth, the better. But, of course, you know, it's going to be hard now given all the credit he's claimed for what's happened since he was elected for him to now come clean and say the economy's no good. You know, the stock market's a bubble. You know, it's, he, and so he, I, I think he got a lot of bad advice. And now, unfortunately, he, he is the fall guy. There, there's no way to stop this. And if the Fed under Powell tries to buy Trump some time, I don't think he's going to be able to buy enough. I think the problem is so big that the minute the Fed has to try to solve it, it's going to unleash a much bigger one. But in I mean, fairness, you, you did call this two weeks ago. You said it was imminent. But you've been, oh, thinking, yeah. you've been thinking this is going to implode uh, before, though. Well, I, I didn't think the stock market would because I thought the Fed would, would, would cave. I have expected the Fed to uh, basically backtrack. I thought the Fed was, was, you know, was more bluffing. And you know, they haven't shrunk the balance sheet. So I'm right there. They've been talking about it. It hasn't actually happened. But they have raised interest rates several times. They're still posturing as if they're going to keep doing it. And when I saw the big increase in long-term interest rates based on a, a, a skyrocketing budget deficit and a skyrocketing trade deficit, I was like, OK, this is it. The market's got to tank. How could the market go up for so many days and ignore all this bad news? I mean, when you see these big increases in interest rates, when you see these deficits, you know that this is a, a problem. Are you expecting it to play out for a while and then go down the next month or so, or just see, keep kind of going down? Well, right now, I think we've done a lot of technical damage. I don't think this market's just going to roar back and make new highs unless the Fed engineers it. But if the Fed's going to continue to posture as if rates are going up and they're going to shrink their balance sheet, then they're going to sell the stock market. And more importantly, they're going to sell the bond market. I know you got to go, but we're back in 60 seconds. Let me ask you one question. How low do you think it'll go then? And, and then how do we come back out of that if what you're saying is true? Back in 60. The head of Euro-Pacific Capital, Europac.com, Peter Schiff, is our guest. He was on with us on the 19th two weeks ago and said, it's imminent. We could have, you know, one of these collapses on Monday coming up in the next few weeks. And, of course, he said that a few weeks ago on, 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 on his own show. So... I get he's a smart guy. I've been interviewing him probably, I don't know, at least 15 years or so. And he's a respected guy. In fact, he said a lot of things they didn't want to hear, so he's kind of been banned off MSNBC and CNBC and, uh, you know, uh, uh, other channels. I guess he's on Fox Business some. Uh, but he's here, and here's where I stand, and, and then I want him to be able to finish up and get out of here because I know he's busy. Trump culturally going after political correctness, trying to secure our border, trying to not attack our families, take care of our veterans— the exuberance, the positivity, I like that. I get there's issues. Damned if he brings the economy down to reset it. Damned if he doesn't, it's a bubble. They blame it on him. So it's kind of like I'm a backseat driver, and we all are, other than our own positivity, our own exuberance. But I'm not in a cult at the same time. I just think, what would it be like if Hillary was in? They were coming after the free press. They already are. They, I mean, we'd be in a much worse world. So I just don't want to be the eternal pessimist here. But I've been sitting there every day just waiting to wake up and see the stock market drop a couple thousand points and then precipitate a downward spiral. So if he just joined us during the last segment, he was getting into, is the Fed really going to raise rates? Then it's going to start going down. If they don't, how long can that go? So just finishing up then on what you expect, depending on what the Fed does, this to look like and uh, some of the time frames there. It's not just the Fed raising short-term rates. It is the market raising long-term rates. 
The yield on a 10-year Treasury is about 3%, right? Just under 3%. Historically, the yield averages uh, the, the nominal GDP, which is, you know, the real GDP plus the inflation rate. So if you look at where GDP is now in inflation, the yield should be 7%. Why is it 3%? We can't afford 7%. If everything is so great, why are interest rates still so low? I mean, none of it makes sense. I mean, they're all, they're low, but they can't stay here. So the market is now getting a sense of this massive supply of Treasury bonds that is going to be flooding the market. Why would you want to own these bonds? China doesn't want to own them. Japan doesn't want to own them. Americans don't have any money to buy them. We have the lowest savings rate in over 10 years. Nobody wants these Treasuries. And not only does the Treasury have to sell them, the Fed says they're going to sell theirs. So there are no real buyers. Yields have to go up. And so everything has to come crashing down. These social issues need to take a back seat. If the economy crashes, if the market crashes, if we have a worse economy than the one that Bush left Obama, then none of the other stuff matters because we're simply paving the way for somebody worse than Hillary Clinton, not worse than that. You know, I mean, Bernie Sanders, I think, is an honest man. He's just completely wrong. He's, he just, he's just a naive socialist who doesn't know anything. Uh, Hillary was just about making money for herself. But I don't want socialists taking over Washington. I don't want a wave of discontent, right, so that— I think what he's trying to say is that if they use Trump as the fall guy and they collapse the economy and blame it on him, they're going to be like, see what happens when you get a— uh, this, these Republican, a Republican conservative platform person in there, and he starts, the, the, the country just goes to hell in a handbasket. So we need to get in somebody like Clinton, uh, Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders in there, a real socialist, to really bring us down down that golden brick road and really take us to nirvana. That is what how they're going to sell it, and, and they're going to use that as a mind control technique to... Um, not only that, they'll rig the vote, the voting, uh, 10 ways to Sunday, probably, uh, regarding that. But I think that's how they would get their candidate into the white house is through something like that. They could blame it on Trump and say, you know, we got to have this other, it's obviously the only thing that's going to save the country. And then that'll, that'll be the literal final nail in, in the coffin for the country. Sanders or somebody like him can surf into the White House. I don't want to see all these Republicans lose. Yeah, see what he said. Sanders or somebody like him can surf into the White House because they wouldn't even, if they could blame it all on Trump and get everybody to hate Trump and, 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 and demonize him, even though they were the ones that orchestrated the collapse of the economy because they wanted to get him out of there, even if he does like one full term, he won't last a second term if the economy is like, you know, if they have imploded the economy, because he'll be blamed for it. So they'll have some socialist candidate just totally surfing into the White House with, uh, because everybody has drank the, the Kool-Aid, essentially, and believe that we have to have some kind of socialist devil in the White House, and that's, gonna what, that's what's going to deliver us. First in 2018 and then in 2020, because if you're worried about these other issues, what do you think is going to happen when the Democrats have, a, have everything? And not just regular Democrats, people way to the left of any, any Democrat. Who's so in other words, if they can do this, it's not going to just be Bernie, somebody like Bernie Sanders or Hillary Clinton in the White House. They're going to have the, the, the House. They're going to have everything. They're going to have the Senate. Everything's good. They're going to own it all. And they're going to be able to uh, like ramrod through anything they want to, any kind of legislation. They're going to have all the votes to get it. It's going to be an absolute total Democratic majority if they can pull this off because in i can't see a better satanic game plan than this scenario in order to just totally destroy the they want to turn all of america into what california is they've already pretty much got california with all, i mean I've, I've been reporting like almost on a week or bi-weekly you know uh every other week at least once a month on the stuff going on in California from the directed energy weapons, literally just zapping houses with people in them and, and destroying them one after the other, after the other with all the foliage around the houses literally left intact. I mean, from the illegal aliens pouring into the stuff they were trying to pull off at the Oroville dam. Uh, I reported on that extensively to all of the socialist 
just insane legislation jerry brown and 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 the illegal aliens what they're doing to that and the drugs and all the stuff that's going on in california they want to turn that banana republic of california that into into all of america and i can't see a better way for them to do it other than this scenario where they've got democrats in power at every level senate house and president now i know this isn't going to happen tomorrow but it could happen i mean this could start i believe there's elections this year the 2018 or whatever if they if they really were able to start demonizing the whole republican movement blame it on them and demonize trump or whatever and have the economy tank that'd be a very powerful motivator for people to vote the other way never been in office because this is going to put and then they they would just rig the votes on top of it such a black eye on capitalism on on, on cutting they're going to say we need more government we need more regulation exactly look at how badly business screwed up the economy we yep. cut taxes on business and look at the mess right oh obama obama handed a perfect economy well, let me trump. bring that up He's i mean trump up. is trying to unify the co- I, I, I want to just read this this headline here this is from communist news network cnn and this just appeared um well actually this was actually last year and they were they were almost like they were prognosticating this will trump backlash make american socialist great again so I've, ever since he got into office, and I knew about the scenario before he went in, I always, and I, I heard that this was probably one of the, if, if none of the other plans worked to get Trump out of office, this would probably be the last one they would use. And it could actually accomplish a lot of the satanic goals of the Illuminati. This whole scenario that I'm talking about, and this was the one thing that that I I um I don't want to say feared it, but I'm I'm just saying was definitely in the back of my mind. They're going to get this guy in so that you know he can do some stuff, but then in the, ultimately they 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 end up blaming him for everything, the collapse of the economy. When this has literally been decades and decades and decades in the making i mean took us off the gold standard in 1933 took us totally off the silver standard basically in 1968 where there was no more silver in the coinage there's nothing backing the dollar other than thin air they print the money out of thin air the stock market's a bubble it's all kind of a big illusion and they have been moving us toward this eventuality for a long long time but in the end who are they ultimately going to blame Wouldn't it be better to blame the guy that's doing more conservative things in there right now? I'm not, not, again, I'm not saying that I'm giving some blanket endorsement of Trump, but the fact remains is that he's doing more conservative things. And I'm not saying he's done everything perfect because I've I've put out a lot of emails on that too, on stuff that he's done that I do not agree with at all. But the reality is, is he's even been far more conservative than Reagan when he was his first year of office far more on the stuff that he's enacted and the stuff he's done and how he's trying to shut down the border and things of this nature and a lot of other stuff that he's done he's got us out of a a lot of these different treaties that we were in if they could blame it on him oh boy that would be the perfect scenario for satan i would think business and look at the mess right oh obama obama handed a perfect economy let me bring that up i mean trump is trying to unify the country the left is trying to cause a civil war it's in the WikiLeaks. so do they get any blame if they're able to tank all this uh no i I don't look i think their trump's gonna get blamed. no they're gonna they're gonna be just nodding their heads saying see we told you so nasty pelosi and chuck schumer and all the gang all those devils and i'm not saying the republicans are any better okay because they just basically do nothing now they're just they're just basically you know you know spineless devils um but they there'd be a lot of of i mean every single lamestream media prostitute media 
CNN, MSNBC, every single one of them would be shaking their head. CNC, we told you Trump was was the source of all evil on the planet. We told you he would bring this country to, to ruin. We And every single devil in Hollywood and Lady Gaga and Oprah and all of them, that's all you would hear 24-7 all day long. And, I mean, all the good stuff he's done, you don't ever hear anything about any of it other than maybe a blip on the radar and then they just go on to the next thing to demonize the guy. So. Because he's already claimed credit for how great everything is. He said, because of me, the economy is booming. But don't you get he's trying to cheerlead to prop it up and get... Yeah, see, they would use that against him. Because if he said, you know, the the economy... And and I'm not saying the statistics he cited aren't real. It's just that it's almost like giving him more rope to hang himself with at the time. Because they would be playing all those clips over. Like, like if they were able to collapse the economy in, in, in... do all these things then they would show all the clips of trump saying how great things are and it would just give them more fuel for their fire actual jobs back you know that but that's not that's not going to get actual jobs back and it's not getting actual jobs back what we need for actual jobs is we need more i don't believe that i mean from from according to the statistics i've seen his first year in office it was like 2.2 million more jobs were created in this country now i'm not saying everybody's got it great but I think it'd be a whole lot worse if Hitlery was in there, and um, I think that I wouldn't even be on air right now. I really felt like if Hit- Hillary got in, that it would just be a matter of months before she got in office before they would start really going after the internet and anybody on alternative um, uh, media that would be going against the globalist plan. I really think if they got Hillary in there, they were really prepared to take the gloves off and. Um, because she was literally the last part of the puzzle, the last nail in the coffin to implement all of this. And this other scenario that's happened has seemed to throw a monkey wrench into things because it sure unraveled a lot of their plans that they were trying to implement. There is no, and they sure have demonized this guy. I mean, there's no doubt on that. You know, if they were for him, if the mainstream media was before him, if, if, if like the Pope and all the other people and all the people in Hollywood that just hate his guts and have said, you know, he's, satan or whatever uh, this is part of the plan so that they would demonize them all this time and in 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 wring their hands and flail and i mean it just doesn't make sense savings we need more capital investment we need to grow worker productivity none of this is happening because we've got a gigantic government in the way and we've got too much debt so sure so what does your gut debt. tell you do you think the fed backs off uh, and then back and again he didn't give trump credit for anything for any job creation or whatever. I, I think that was disingenuous of him to do that, you know, but, you know. Trump, or do you think that uh, they go ahead and start raising interest rates? Look, I, I think... I mean, it's a fact that he's brought a lot of different U.S. companies have already come back or are coming back to the U.S. A lot of different ones. I mean, he was doing that literally, like, from almost the first day he was in office. He was... He was literally, that was big, a big part of his um, campaign promises, was putting pressure on these countries that had moved away. You better come back or there's going to be all kind of tariffs and penalties on you when you try to ship your goods back in here. And um, almost in, shaming them as well, which, uh, you know, they should be uh, in Mexico and in China, and on, you know, slave labor, whatever. I mean, that's ridiculous. So, I, I, mean, I, I just don't think that's fair to not give him any credit for that. I think that eventually, if the economic data gives them cover, if the market goes down enough, they will be political for Trump the way they were political uh, for, for Clinton. I mean, now that Powell is there, Powell is a Republican. Powell is not Janet Yellen. I didn't think Janet Yellen wanted to help Trump. And, but maybe Powell will. I mean, that might be why Trump appointed him. But I don't think it's going to help. I think it's going to be too little too late. I think the economy is too bad. The bubble is too big. There's too much air. That another round of quantitative easing, cutting interest rates from 1.5% to zero is not going to do it. There are no more bubbles to inflate. We have the biggest bubble now. We have the mother of all bubbles, and the air is going to come out of it. And I don't think Trump can get out of Dodge in time. And this is the danger. This is the political danger of, of, of where we are and why I really wish sure. that he had come in more forthright about the problems, not that he caused them, but that he's going to clean up the mess 
Now people are going to claim that it's Trump's mess that he. So, and I think he brings up a valid point there that if he had just come in from the very beginning and said, listen, this economy is in a horrible situation. I don't see how you clean up a situation though where they're printing money out of thin air, where there's nothing backing. I don't understand how any you could ever really fix a system that is so flawed and so evil and so broken I, again you know but if he would have run on that he may not have got the necessary votes to have such an overwhelming victory that even the vote rigging couldn't compensate for it so i think he was doing whatever he had to do to 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 get into office and trying to run on a positive platform I mean, you know you never hear presidents running on a negative platform because they're not going to get elected so i, I kind of understand both sides there to be clear see his great and strength is the optimism you can also call it his achilles heel we'll be watching it together yeah. uh, again but it's false optimism i don't want to be optimistic that you know the ice is sound and then i go on and i fall through right you you, you need to only be optimistic when it's warranted this false optimism, you know, you, you promise a lot and you deliver very little. You have so many people that expect so much and they're going to be so disappointed. This is not going to go over well. And, and so uh, a better approach would, would have been, uh, you know, a, a more honest uh, explanation of the problem. And even if that meant one term, it would have been one term that was worth it. It would have been one term where we could do something good as opposed to just be a stepping stone. All right. Um, yeah, but one term and then you have, you know, Bernie Sanders or Hillary Clinton back in, you know, there with, with a, you know, it's just, you know, our hope is not in this world as Christians. Our hope is not in all this stuff that I'm talking, but I, I am a watchman also. And a watchman job, a watchman's job is to warn. I've been warning about this ever since I've been in ministry from 06, that this eventuality something's and i can't really think of a better scenario than to do it under trump's uh presidency because bush both bush one bush two obama clinton uh, bill clinton all of them were on that firmly entrenched in that satanic team all working toward the same goal Democrat, it doesn't matter in that regard at, at the highest levels, especially with the presidents. Um, to me, it would seem the most likely time to do this. And this would also demonize the conservative movement and Republicans and, and they could blame everything on the conservatives is to do it while Trump is in the White House. It's something much worse. Well, Peter Schiff, your smart guy, will uh, track this as it unfolds. Thank you so much for the time. Okay, so that's that's all we have on that. I just wanted to kind of give you an update there, a little heads up. Uh, I've heard that if these scenarios happen, they could happen into uh, March, uh, April, May in those. Now, I'm not saying it is. I'm saying it could. I think that. You know, a lot of times I'll warn about stuff and the prayers of the saints will, you know, God in his mercy will move things forward or whatever. But there is going to come a time when in order for the tribulation period to play out, you know, I know you have the, these guys up there that are saying they're prophets and it's these Trump prophecies and all this stuff. Here's what I don't understand about that, about this, these Trump prophecies, okay? How does that fit into the Bible? Because I could have swore... When I look at Revelation and Daniel and Matthew 24 and 2 Thessalonians, etc., etc., that in the end times, things aren't, things aren't going to just get gooder and gooder, as a guy used to say in my one of my first Baptist churches I went to. <laughs> uh, I don't see how that plays out. Like, he's going to be some, like, this anointed savior it's going to come and come on how, how does that so is god going to have to rewrite the bible or are we going to have this time of prosperity before the tribulation i i don't know i mean I, I i can't really see how biblically sound that theory could possibly be call me crazy but i'm always looking at okay well how does this figure into the bible how did this this line up with the bible whatsoever like all these people saying that, oh, Obama's the Antichrist. I'm like, how are you going to get the Jews to...
to accept Obama as their awaited savior. When he has to prove his lineage unbroken back to David, okay, and I've done whole studies on this, just keen Obama, Antichrist. I've done, like, it was like an 11-part study on this. On There's certain parameters that only the Muslims, the Jews, and different religions will have to accept in order for them to accept the Antichrist as their awaited savior. Now, Maitreya says he's everything. I'm not saying he is, okay? I've done tons of teachings on Maitreya. He says he is the awaited savior for the, the Jews, the Muslims, the Hindus, the Buddhists, and the Christians, okay? Uh, whether he's that or whether he or he's the false version or whether he's plays a part in it, I think he's going to play some part. I've done a lot of studies on that that dude um, or that entity, I should say. There's no way they're going to accept Obama as that. He's he's, I mean, and I'm not being prejudicial, but he's half black, he's half white. He's he's not going to be able to trace his lineage back to David, and it's sure not going to be like a pure bloodline. I mean, there's, there's ample amount of evidence that his mother was basically a porn star, and his dad was potentially as well, uh, back way, way, way back in the day, if you actually start looking at that whole scenario. And I think I've seen a lot. I mean, they're not going to accept Obama. There's all these biblical parameters that he cannot fulfill, is the point I'm trying to make. And that's the whole thing about Trump. I'm like, well, okay, listen, how are you going to, He's like this, whatever, these Trump prophecies, come on. And that guy that's that, that supposed prophet that's going around touting all this stuff, going on like Jim Baker show and all these other shows and whatever. And I haven't, I've seen a little bit of it, but I don't see how biblically that lines up with the word of God. I, I don't see it. Sorry. I mean, yeah, I like to be positive, but... <laughs> I don't see how it's happening. Anyway, let's go forward here. Um, and we're really going to switch gears here. New recycling technology. Actually, cannibalism in, in a form. Dead pe- where dead people are liquefied, drained into city sewers, and then dumped on food crops as bio sludge. Now, I've talked about this a little bit. Uh, but this is actually taken it to a whole other level talked about before about that documentary that i had watched about new york city's sewage system and how literally they were they have such an efficient system there that they can literally take like all the stuff that's that's put down the toilet the feces the urine and everything else that's put down there how they can literally process that in one day and dump the um purified sewage back into like basically new york harbor there the same day and that they're taking the actual uh, i mean it was a whole document they're not it's not like they're trying to cover this up they're taking all of the solid waste that from this supposed purification process drying it and then selling it to these fur to these uh fertilizer farms and in the documentary they were actually the one guy was like trailing this one truck that was that was like uh going out of the sewage thing he was trying to he was trying to like basically trail where the guy was going to end up going and i mean there was all this cover-up and secretism and all this stuff and that's what they're doing with this bio sludge they're dumping it back on the crops specifically that are being used for human consumption and i mean i imagine that they're not just exclusively that but a lot of it is so you're literally you could be unless you're eating organic you could be eating like strawberries that were literally grown off of like the worst human and you have to understand then you have all the other toxicity factors you have all of the meds that people are on all of the toxicity that people have in their bodies coming out through the urine and feces then you're concentrating that and you're putting it back on the soil and you're growing plants out of that you know it's really really a evil bad satanic scenario and it just sounds just like something satan would just love to be 
have us all doing and not even knowing it being destroyed for lack of just like when the whole thing with seminex came out with with the pepsico how they were putting using aborted fetal cell lines of babies as flavor enhancers and all in in a lot of the pepsi product and the well pepsico which owns all these different you know not just pepsi but a lot of different soft drinks and in in uh fruit juices and stuff like this supposedly they stopped doing that i don't know i don't trust them any far i can throw them a new recycling technology called biocremation now so this is going to a whole other level what i'm talking about now whole other level called biocremation liquefies the dead then dumps their liquid remains into city sewers where solid and liquid waste are collected as bio sludge to be dumped on food crops so i imagine they would just commingle now the liquefied dead bodies of people which you'd get all the toxicity then with the feces and urine of 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 the populations before they were dead obviously and then all of the other stuff you dump down the drains uh you would be commingling all that together then dumping that on food on the food crops and then growing your plants your your franken food your gmo crops off this this satanic bio sludge that's literally now um a portion of it is now human liquefied human dead bodies you know those crops in turn are then fed back to humans as part of the mainstream food supply in a shocking true story that's part part the matrix the movie and part soylent green also the movie um and if you don't know like more so soylent green ugh, uh that was a man that movie was really depressing. <laughs> I mean, it was really... Charlton Heston, I think, was in it. and Oh, man. What all... That's really what they want. They really want Soylent Green. If you, wanna, if you want a glimpse at... I think more so Soylent Green is more, if, if you had to pick one, more so accurate than The Matrix. Because Soylent Green is really what they want. They want absolute total control of the cities. They want everything around the cities dead. They want they basically want an excuse to basically in, in soylent green in the end it turned it out that they found out that they were taking the dead bodies they were most likely dissolving them liquefying them or something and then um and there was a lot of people dying all the time you could go to these death centers to voluntarily die because your life was so horrible where you would be given like you know half hour of air conditioning and and you'd be you would be played this nice movie and by the end of the movie you're dead laying on the table and that's the one guy did it uh in the movie or at least one i mean i, I think there was other people that did it too um and they were basically processing the bodies down to where they could turn them into these soylent green pe pellets which i'm sure the whole word soylent soy is not fit for human consumption fermented soy um like that they've used in the orient for a long time a little bit of fermented soy is one thing okay but gmo flat out soy is not fit for human consumption it is highly estrogenic they even use it in estrogen therapy it's so highly estrogenic meaning it will turn a man basically into a female almost and this is why men have such problems nowadays with the whole erectile dysfunction stuff that you see those viagra pills for all the time or whatever and and um the whole men having unbelievably low testosterone rates and the whole phenomenon of the soy boys and the little feminine millennials that are flitting around and and in on this demasculated society that is being produced this gelded society that is now becoming the norm and I, think about it if you've got an estrogen estrogenized ma man do you think that man is really going to be willing to fight the new world order or, or or be a warrior for christ or or you know what i mean or, or really you know take care of his family and 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 be willing to die for I, it's probably highly unlikely you know if he's got like a very very low testosterone rate and another thing that it causes is basically men growing like the kind of like the female breast type of thing you know it's called gynecomastia um that's another thing that it causes you should not be consuming soy okay soy milk soy avoid it. and you know you go into the health food stores it's, it's in everything 
you know. They got canola oil and everything, which is also just one of the worst things you could possibly put in your body. And they got soy. And so the, the health food stores are just as big of a minefield as the regular grocery stores. I mean, maybe not as big, but, you know, there, there's still tons of stuff you need to avoid that they're putting in there to kill you and, and to emasculate you. And then if you create, you know, you put the soy in, you know, it wreaks havoc on a woman's hormonal system as well. I mean, it's not a natural good form of, of, of estrogen anyway it's 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 not fit for human consumption i've got a whole file on on soy that you know i can i can send out or email to people but um anyway i just i got off on a tangent there but i wanted to at least bring bring that up as well so let's go back to this oh but the soil and green was those the whole thing was i believe that what they were telegraphing there was soil and green was what the people were fed with and basically, like, the, these trucks would come around, from what I can remember, it was a long time since I've seen the movie, and they would, like, distribute this Soylent Green, which was the, the thing, the main, I think the main food source. And I think it was implying there that not only was it, like, probably this GMO soy, but it was also then the other part of it was the dead bodies that were in there. So you were, at the end, Charlton Heston says, Soylent Green is people, that's the famous line you'll see that but i also think that was soy mixed in there is i think what they were implying so i can't imagine a worse combination of you know soy maybe some canola oil and then human dead bodies this is ultimately what satan would want us to subsist on you know because obviously cannibalism i mean we're not even supposed to we're not supposed to drink blood of, of an animal or or god forbid another person obviously but cannibalism also would be obviously highly forbidden in the bible and if god if satan can trick us into doing these things if satan can trick you into getting vaccines that were cultured off literal aborted babies and there's at least 17 that are literal aborted babies they're called human diploid cells look it up in the physician's desk reference look up verivax look up mmr look up those vaccines I did, i've done whole studies on that i mean what kind of curse are you bringing on yourself what kind of curse are you bringing on yourself? Maybe unknowingly, you know, by consuming, by, let's say, the cannibalistic thing, if you didn't know about it. You know, drinking PepsiCo products, and, they, and they've got the Seminex with the aborted baby flavor enhancer. I mean, why would they do that unless there was some kind of major satanic agenda? So, this is why you always hear me quoting that Bible verse about, lest we be ignorant, you know, lest Satan get an advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his devices. Well, that's the hardest, of all time periods, I'm, I'm, I could almost say this with certainty, of all time periods that have ever been, I cannot imagine a time period we could be living in where there are more of Satan's devices afoot, where we could potentially be destroyed for lack of knowledge than now. Or be potentially bringing curses on ourselves and not even know it. From what you bring into your house, from what you're consuming, to what you might be watching. To I mean, there's just so many things, ways that, you know, Satan can get an advantage of us. Um, so, in a shocking true story that's part The Matrix and part Soylent Green, a company based in Smith Falls, Ontario, has devised a biocremation system that it calls an eco-friendly alternative to flame-based creation and casket burials, reports Canada's CBC News. The company is called Hilton's Aqua Green Dispositions, a uh, nice flowery sounding name, and touts its approach to dissolving dead bodies as an eco-friendly alkaline hydrolysis. According to the CBC News, Dead bodies are liquefied with a process that blends water with an alkali solution. The company's website describes the body liquefaction process as follows. Biocremation creates a highly controlled and sophisticated environment. And this is for the sophisticated person, you know? This is for the person that's in their smoking jacket with an ascot, reading a Wall Street Journal, basset hound at the feet, maybe sitting in a velvet chair. This is for the sophisticant, you know? So we need to understand that. A highly controlled and sophisticated environment that uniquely, yeah, uniquely combines water, alkali, heat, and... I love how they're using all these wonderful, fun-sounding, neat terms to describe this liquefaction process of dead bodies. This process biochemi biochemically hydrolyzes the human body, leaving only bone fragments. During a typical biocremation cycle, the body is reduced, bone fragments are rinsed, 
And the remaining byproducts, and the remaining byproduct is, is a sterile fluid. Mmm, yummy. There's no mention of handling the mercury and other toxic heavy metals that would survive such a process, of course. Those metals would obviously end up in the city sewer system all by design. The company came under fire in 2016 when it was reported that the liquid byproduct is then drained into the town's sewage system. And here is the report right here. Smith Falls Company that dissolves the dead has license suspended. Oh, they were bad boys. I can't imagine that, that this wonderful company would ever do anything nefarious or evil or malevolent. Why would they do such a thing? I mean, they're obviously good people. The Smith Falls Ontario Biocremation Company that offers what what it calls an eco-friendly alternative to flame-based cremation and casket burials has had its operating license suspended. Um, the Bereavement Authority of Ontario suspended the license for Hilton Aqua Green Dispositions on January 24th. This was just this year? Oh, it says 2016. Oh, okay, it's in such small print, I can't... Yeah. So evidently they got back in the good graces of the government and now they're back in business. Um... As Natural News has extensively documented, cities across North America, including Toronto, collect sewage into so-called biosolids or biosludge, which is trucked out of the city's sewage center, which is what I was describing earlier, and dumped onto food crops in rural areas. Uh, and I'm going to play the I'm going to play this trailer. This is a new movie that Mike Adams is putting out called uh, Biosludged. Creating a valuable product, Biosolids. I think this is one of their infomercials. Everyone that I've talked to about this issue had never heard of it, and it is the greatest environmental crime in America. The EPA and we, as a country, have inadvertently created really a devastating vector for bioterrorism of ourselves. Raw sewage, finding a way to make it a little more useful for low... Remember, it's all about killing us off, making us sick, weak, and dependent upon the system. And this is just one more way that there would they would do that. I mean, this is absolutely straight from the pit of hell. ...farms by creating fertilizer. But the question is, is this change safe and sanitary? Oh, so I sanitary. began to look at it. I found a book called Science for Sale by Dr. David Lewis, and I highly recommend this book. And Dr. Lewis saw his career destroyed by the EPA. Biosolids contains every toxic chemical, every heavy metal, every pollutant that we're concerned about causing adverse health effects. The reason that no one suggests this is completely safe is because there is no existing research stating that it is. And then they just flush the toilet and they think everything's gone. So it's like a flush and forget type of scenario. And they don't realize that, that it's right back on their dinner plate three weeks later. I mean, I don't know, if, I don't think the growing cycle is quite that. But the point he's trying to make is that, you know, like in New York City, for instance, they're literally dumping that and that that's not even talking about the water that they're treating that they're dumping back into new york harbor now they're, they're not even, we're not even talking about that okay we're talking about what they what they extracted out of the water the the contaminated sewage and now are pumping back out on to the uh, fields where they're growing food most likely gmo monsanto friendly franken food crops and then it's back on your plate, and he's saying three weeks later, I wouldn't quite go that far. I mean, the growing cycle's not that quick, but I mean, y you get the point, though. This is the importance of being clean, because when we do flush, it's going somewhere else. And it could be part of our food supply. It could be contaminating our cities and our children. And when we've interviewed people who have been part of this industry, they told us that the city leaders get financed kickbacks from the biosludge companies to keep the system going. Uh, but let any scientist try faking data, they will be fired and put in prison. But fake data for the government and its interest, and the industry's interest, and you will be promoted and protected at the highest levels. Remember, everything you flush down the toilet goes into these biosolids. 
If you wouldn't put it in your own garden, don't flush it down the toilet. This here is the, the site where the biosolids from the Kelowna plant actually go. It's completely surrounded by a uh, non-residential area. I don't know whether this is an error or if it's a deliberate deception. This is so bad that this generation of humans, we may leave behind truly a toxic legacy for generations to come. It is the universe of pollution in one product. So, I guess the movie's already been, I don't know if it's been released or not, because it says it's coming in 2017, but we're obviously in 2018. Uh, so, not 100% sure about that, but... The website's biosludged.com. It's also the link that I just played. So it's it's in the PDF for this date at um, February 12, 2018. So for more the for more details on this alarming process that spreads toxic heavy metals, pharmaceutical chemicals, and industrial pollutants onto soil crop onto crop soils, um, you can click on that link. In effect, the practice of biocremation. Which, okay, now we're back to biocremation, which, you know, is a totally different thing, but it's basically, instead of using the feces and the urine and everything else you dump down the toilet and the drain, you're basically, you know, doing this with dead bodies. You're adding that. The, in effect, the practice of biocremation means that dead humans would be liquefied and fed to plants, which are then eaten by other humans. This process is also militantly called recycling, by proponents of biosludge and biocremation operations. It's all pushed under the agenda of green living. Soon it will be no, bar, no doubt be part of the Agenda 21 and the globalist push to kill off 90% of the human population on the planet while feeding the dead to the living. And I, I think, you know, again, if we could see what's happening to the population at large when we're doing this, again, I don't know what kind of curse is collectively falling on humanity if they would eat plants grown out of soil that were fertilized by liquefied dead bodies. I don't know. I, again, I don't have all the answers. But I know it can't be good <laughs> from a spiritual standpoint, from a health standpoint, from a body, soul, and spirit standpoint. There's no way it could be good for us. It's got to be evil. Okay, so going further here. Perhaps the biocremation process wouldn't be so bad if humans weren't already so heavily contaminated with toxic heavy metals like mercury, cadmium, and lead. Again, I don't buy that though either. I, I think from a spiritual standpoint, you know, it's horrible. But, but thanks to the relentless contamination of the food supply, personal care products, and medicines with toxic substances, most humans are so saturated with toxins that eating them would make you sick. The more accurate description of eating recycled dead people might be cannibalism, or in the case of feeding dead people to plants and then eating the plants, it might be called cannibalism one step removed. Yeah, I think that's pretty accurate. While from a scientific point of view, the idea of recycling nutrients of dead bodies back into food crops may not seem outlandish, from a humanitarian and dignity point of view, something seems very incredibly inhumane and deceptive about calling this recycling. By the same logic, humans should also be eating their own recycled feces and calling it green living. Oh wait, a new technology developed for space travel will allow astronauts to achieve exactly that, eating their own feces. And here's a link to the article, hey, this space lasagna tastes like feces. Astronauts to eat their own microbe recycled human waste in latest science quote breakthrough. Where do I sign up? I mean, come on. So, um, and that's a real article you can link to, and it's from Space News. I mean, this is like probably basically from NASA. Um, the good news about all this, we're told, is that relatives of the dead can reclaim their titanium implants and other metals from the body. And those are the ones that have all the, Im the implants are not just implants. They also have chip implants in them. And this is how they were identifying a lot of the bodies where the houses were literally zapped from the these high-powered lasers that were frying all the houses out in California in these supposed forest fires, even though it was all being created by the planes up in the skies, hitting them with the, with the directed energy weapons. 
been proven over and over again. All, all the foliage around the house left totally free. Well, how did the fire get there? Doesn't the fire normally spread through a force and then it gets your house? No, no, not in this case. It just kind of happened. All the houses kind of seem to spontaneously combust. One after another. Oh, and then it skipped a house. Oh, that guy either must have either been a Christian that God protected or they were on some list where it says, okay, don't fry this guy's house. Okay, because he's one of us. That's the only thing I can think, you know. So, but they were able to identify a lot of the remains of the people by their implants because they were all RFID microchips. So, again, I got into this previous study on how they're putting these implants, these RFID microchip transceiver type implants into these implants and they're so hardy that they can, you know, survive these fires and stuff. But anyway, we're told that relatives can of the dead can reclaim the titanium implants. Oh, this was Aunt Martha's hip implant. Oh, I'll, I'll cherish it forever. I mean, what do you do? Put it on a mantle? I mean, give me a break. Um, and other metals from the body after liquefied remains are flushed into the city sewer system. Items such as titanium implants and pacemakers can be recovered for recycling at the conclusion of the process, touts Hilton's aqua green dispositions free. Why would you want that? I mean, that's really beyond morbid oh and you can also pick up the remaining bone uh chips and fragments which are safe to handle with bare hands immediately after the process after the rinsing process evidently says the company this is apparently the bonus they're offering so we have that okay now let's go forward here oh hold on i'm way over time on this okay so i'm gonna i'm gonna go ahead and end part one here and we will go to part two next god bless you Scott Johnson's 1,000 plus audio teachings and PDF documents are available for free 24-7 on the internet at contendingfortruth.com. That's C-O-N-T-E-N-D-I-N-G-F-O-R-T-R-U-T-H dot com. In addition, we also offer a free Christian current event and health email newsletter. You can sign up at contendingfortruth.com. These email newsletters typically only generate about three to six emails per month if you subscribe to both lists. Please prayerfully help us to continue this work. For mail correspondence or to support this ministry, our mailing address is Scott Johnson, 2359 Highway 70, Southeast, number 321, Hickory, NC, 28602. Or on the internet, a PayPal donation link can be found at contendingfortruth.com. Thank you, and may the Lord Jesus Christ richly bless you.